standing our ground as Mi'kmaq people. The whole writing letters and, you know, voting for the next politician, that's not gonna change nothing. I don't believe anyways. It's all rigged, it's all fucked. unceded Mi'kmaq territory that we live on here. And it's all on unceded Mi'kmaq territory. Let's get that straight. <laughs> as grassroots people, we uh, hold on to our treaty as much as possible and we use that treaty to defend the lands and waters. These big corporations like to say they consulted with the Mi'kmaq chiefs. But these chiefs do not speak on our behalf as grassroots. That's the INAC system. The grassroots elders, the grassroots women, the grassroots grandmothers, they are the backbone to our nation. They're the ones who decide whether um, we go to war or whether we allow these corporations here. Or They're pretty much our voice. And the grassroots people are the ones running the show, the ones that are left out with the, the native politics, the chief and councils and uh, INAC system. And, KMK and O, and there's so many uh, organizations like that. An elder asked me to come up here, and when the elder said, I do, because I know our elder was there before too. They were there standing up when they were doing things wrong to the earth. I take my orders from the grandmothers, the elders. They're the only ones that are allowed to tell me what to do and what not to do. I got my orders, stay here, hold the space, don't give company access to the site. Nobody really benefits from these corporations coming in from here. Maybe the chiefs get something on the side, who knows? You know, they've been doing it a long time and nobody really benefits from them. And when we, when we stand up and do what we're doing at the front lines, you know, we're, we're broke, we're poor. You know, we don't got the support. No chiefs won't come up to us and give us money to support us. You know, they don't even show up here. But we don't feel poor. You know, we're not poor. We got the land, we got the, we got the trees, we got the animals, you know, Someone. and the water. We're not poor. Band councils are just part of Canada, the corporation. It has nothing to do with how our ancestors fished and hunted. When our ancestors made those treaties, they made them based on that. You know, it had nothing to do with the INAC system or Canada, the corporation. Alton Gas, they're trying to come in here and do the brining. First they wanted to build the um, salt caverns down there and the salt that they dig out of there, they want to flush it into the river and they wanted to do that through these pipelines that they put in. And last year when we came down here, we started building the truck house. And then when Alton Gas came down and they started um, digging out the channel, so they, they created this, we call it Treaty Island. We established a TP on there and under the 1752 treaty, we laid our traps right into this channel. And when we laid our traps and we did our, our fishing traps in there, uh, within less than a month, Mother Earth covered herself over, over our traps. So technically we're still fishing. <laughs> this river still protected under the 1752 treaty under that section four. They're a corporation and they don't understand, they don't understand that connection that we have as indigenous people or people that live off the land either. They don't have it, they don't, all they see is money. Money, money, money. That's how these corporations are run, with money. The relation between the company and my people is, uh, it's despicable, it's disrespectful, you know? They don't ask my people for consent to do these things. You know what I mean, they don't care about that water. Have any of you even fished in that water? But what they're really supposed to do is have all the community elders and all the family members and all the people in that community sit down and talk about these projects. And so this KMKNO decided not to communicate with the communities. They decided not to talk about these projects and all this funding and all this money they're getting from the corporations themselves and the government. They allowed Alton Gas here without the communities, my consent. Every person have to agree. The chiefs are supposed to present that to us, and that's the proper consent. The seven districts 
from all the bands, they all also have to agree too. Not just the chief, like all the Mi'kmaq people have to agree they're with this or not with it. That's what the leaders of the chiefs are supposed to do. There's a lot of things that can go wrong with it. All the, when the board comes in, when the tide comes in, it brings uh, all kinds of fish in the spawn and they go out. They've been doing this for a long time, huh? And it's uh, seabirds, they come in too and they know when the bird is coming in and they land over here and that's when the fish comes in and it's a cycle for them to eat too. Huh? There's cranes here too, the geese comes here, the ducks comes here, even the deer comes down to the bank over here. There's coyotes around and if they want to release that brine in here and they say it's, it'll, it'll wash out but it won't. This tide comes in and out, in and out. It doesn't go to the Atlantic Ocean. This goes connected to the Bay of Fundy. It'll ruin their cycle. Where, where else can they go? Huh? You know, I, I speak for them. The ones that can't speak huh? with the animals and all that. What they can't speak, I'll speak for them. It'll affect everything that is around this area where they have it in Brentwood, all the way around this whole circle area. It'll affect that too, the land, plus the water. See, it will kind of ruin that cycle of life. It'll ruin it. If you will destroy that river and all the wildlife and all the habitat, you take away one of the food chains and then you wipe them all out. The underground salt caverns themselves, if they collapse after they create these salt caverns, it would it would destroy the underground water and who knows for how many miles in each direction. They want to try to make us surrender our treaty rights, our sovereignty as First Nations people by uh, signing away the river and the rights to it to the corporation Alton Gas or Alta Gas that want to uh, dump the brine into and destroy. Without our treaty rights we have no protection. We can't protect the river, we can't protect the woods. We can't protect uh, nothing here if uh, we surrender it. Even the farmers around here depend on this water for their farming. 150 days ago, we started standing at the main gate down here. That's when Alden Gas wanted to come back and start digging the channel out again. And we stopped them with the trailer up there, and we've been there since. Alton Gas has their tail between their legs right now. They don't know what to do. Our treaty rights, they're stronger than Canada's law. They're stronger than provincial law because they're older than all of that stuff. These treaties were made before Canada was even a country and we never ceded our land to nobody. The water is irreplaceable. Number one thing we need for life, for sustenance. Our job here as Mi'kmaq people is to make sure that this earth is, stays green, protect the sacred, protect the water, protect it all for the next seven generations for everyone to come in the future. The most major concern would be the next seven generations. If we don't protect this now, the next seven generations won't have nothing left. And our uh, government will basically just take us out and, and that would be it for all of us. Doing the front lines with your allies, you gotta build that trust and that relationship with your allies. For them to stand side by side with you, and that's a big thing. When we do it, because we did it in Cape Breton against Petrowert, we built those relationships. And it was beautiful how we got rid of Petrowert in less than 10 days. We ignored the INAC system. We ignored the government system. We got rid of them, you know, right quick. The allies have been awesome here. Start earning those, the respect and that, um, you know, we all work together, building that trust amongst each other and that love. It's amazing what we can do when we what? do it together. That's what scares the government, the corporations. You know, there's no stopping that. That's a powerful, powerful movement. Acknowledging that this is happening, this is going on, and trying to uh, teach others, educate others about this project. And this is what, this is where we got now. We got a whole army of, of allies and First Nations working together now. It's starting to grow. And if we continue it, we'll beat these corporations all together. People can help us in our struggle against this big-ass company we call Canada. Um, get involved with uh, 
an action like this in your area. Get people informed about things that are going on. Have community information sessions. You no, know, maybe cause a little bit of havoc in a company. You can donate supplies to these camps that are in your area. Food, water, and wood are the main things. Just go visit these people. If there are people occupied in your area, just visit them, you know? Breaks up our day, makes things go by faster. Just make those connections, keep those connections. Leave the oil in the ground, that's where it belongs. We don't need oil to live. What it's gonna take is that we all live in harmony and love and respect like the seven sacred teachings.